click the links to join the channel here or on subscribe star so let's look at the kind of the progression of not just the superhero genre and it doesn't matter if it's sony fox or marvel whatever it's just that that genre has a certain type of of audience but hollywood in general so let's go back to 2016 to look at s squad part one what's the one which was not a good movie by nobody thought that that i don't think anyone thought that was a good movie fans of the comics anyone came out of that and said yeah that was a well put together movie it's like people come out and they go did that movie just start twice like i'm not a movie expert but didn't it get 40 minutes into it and then it kind of felt like it restarted that was weird yeah that's weird it's that should not have survived editing but it but it did but anyways when people came out of that movie a, a very mediocre film it had some good scenes in it but what was one of the things that you have the association of with that movie was margot robbie in short shorts and a tank top now that's not a reason people didn't go see the movie don't like the left wing was just immediately straw straw man oh the, the chads went and paid money just to see someone in shorts why they can see that on the internet for free it was a piece of the movie it was a facet of the crystal that sparkled pretty brightly but it's not wasn't a reason to pay money for the movie it was part of the movie and it was a little bit of a positive in the movie and the movie had a lot of negatives but that was like what you remember about the movie was i think a lot of a lot of girls cosplayed at her as her and it was probably big for halloween and that was one of the small positives they took away from uh, s squad part one is that they had a little sex appeal and they're a little i don't know fan service sort of thing um and that was in 2016, and then you you realize that the the narrative started changing, maybe because of Trump derangement syndrome or something, but the the vibe in Hollywood started changing pretty quickly. So from 2016, you're thinking, oh, Harley Quinn, a uh, cute chick in short shorts, running around in a mediocre movie, and they go, oh, she's gonna do a, a Birds of Prey movie. And, you know, that should be alarm bells right off the bat because S Squad Part 1, which launched the character, it wasn't a strong enough movie to launch, not a sequel, but a spinoff, I suppose. And in your mind, you're still associating her with short shorts. And no, you're not going to put her in the same outfit every time. But there's going to be, it's like that concept of fan service. Then you look at Birds of Prey, like, this doesn't look like a fun movie where you're trying to please the audience. And I'm not, the movie didn't lecture people, but it was none of it made sense like movies have these little little pieces that you have to you have to judge the movie like action continuity of story and and the character development but one of it is going like one part is going to be i don't know if it's exactly sex appeal but it's going to be like fun appeal or whatever the opposite of lecturing is the opposite of woke is like giving the audience what they want and if they want a bunch of really cute chicks in sexy costumes like not over the top but it means like pandering to the audience i don't it means that they're willing to work with the audience like they're not passive aggressive they're not hostile to the audience and nowadays that sounds like there's so much like cultural marxist hot words associated with, with that and like i can think of it in my, in my in my mind it's like every just every you know checklist of oppression and patriarchy and all these you know all this nonsense like it's just like we hear these words and we're on a different page from these people because we realize yeah that's all just bolshevik brainwashing you, you've been brainwashed by the worst people on earth none of that makes sense especially from an industry that is that has applauded weinstein for 30 years so it's like yes no we don't have your values you, you people are hypocrites you change the flag for the the american soccer team or something but then when a companies advertise in the in in those countries um they uh they edit scenes out of the movies it's like you're not fooling anyone because we have social media to kind of tell on you anyway so when birds of prey came out it uh it bombed horribly because you're looking at the movie like this isn't you're not willing to work with the audience and give them what they want because in their minds it's some kind of patriarchy it's like no no, no you don't understand patriarchy is a good thing men are awesome you really want to really want to give give the customer or, or you know if, if it was a woman a women's movie i would say give the women what they want if they're the ticket to ticket purchasing audience it's like oh no but these are we can give women what they want as long as it's precisely what we want and, and what coca-cola wants and what the banks wants and what your government wants it's weird how we're all on the same page but we can't give we can't give men what they want oh so how well the movie do oh well it bombed out 85 million dollars domestic and it it to break even it would have needed triple that so or quadruple that so it, it's it didn't do very well and you look to birds of prey which i saw it's like this there's nothing here. It's just a plastic movie with a bunch of mediocre chicks wearing like overalls 
none of it makes sense. You're not you're not giving you're not giving the audience anything. You've got I don't know. They're probably reasonably attractive chicks. It's like why didn't you at least give the audience something? So people knew, like by 2020, with uh, with Trump derangement syndrome in full swing, it's like feminism had, I don't know, made this weird passive aggressive comeback. And so what happened is nobody saw the movie. So as I look at S Squad Part One, domestic uh, 330 million. That's not very good. I'm sure the budget was over 200 million dollars, especially with the reshoots. Um, so maybe the worldwide saved it, but again, it wasn't a very good movie. But I guess it had some name recognition, and it had her in short shorts. It's like you realize, yeah, her in those shorts probably brought in another hundred million dollars to the movie. That's just the cold reality of films. So when by the time S Squad come Part Two comes out in twenty twenty one, like wokeness is in full swing. People are well aware of, of the narrative and the passive aggressiveness of Hollywood, and the anti Western sentiment of Hollywood. You know, hating certain group of people like people have caught on to it. it's why solo bombed and it's why um uh and or star wars is on and like anything that's coming out of star uh, disney star wars now and the thing is probably anything that's coming out of disney now like i think we probably reached the tipping point where i don't i don't see them turning it around because they don't want to um yeah mainly because they don't want to i think they probably could but like to turn things around you go like oh you'd have to fire everyone or like have, they'd have to have a come to Jesus moment, but that's not going to happen. So by the time 2021 rolls around this S squad part two, which was a better movie than S squad part one. Yeah, for sure. It was an okay movie. It should have done a, a lot better. And you look at it like, Oh, so Harley Quinn, the, the, the short shorts. It's like, that's what I remember with the movie. Is she going to be, Oh no, no, no. We're going to play that down. Oh, well, that's a selling point for a lot of people. Oh, well, that's like problem. Yeah, yeah, like problematic, istophobic. We're all Hugo Boss watch, talking about comic book movies. It's exactly the same thing. But we don't believe all those things. Like, we have a different belief system. Oh, well, we didn't want you as customers anyway. Yeah, you, but you didn't. I mean, challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. You got $56 million on a movie that, you know, costs cost more than that to make. Costs uh, multiples of that to make. So you're going to continue to just not give the, the audience what they want and lose money. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But um, my, my point is, like, the numbers don't actually reflect the movie because it wasn't this bad. The numbers reflect people losing, falling out of, I was going to say losing their heart on, falling out of love with Hollywood in general. And I look at Hollywood now and I think, like, how do you turn this around, Hollywood? They're not going to turn it around. They don't want to. They really don't want to. Like the people who are in Hollywood making these movies are absolutely drinking the Kool Aid. So could you make um, Pirates of the Caribbean Part Six a chick flick today? No, not in today's climate. It's impossible. And I look at a lot of other things out of Hollywood, and I think you know there's a lot of Hollywood movies that you can't. You couldn't even make Pirates of the Caribbean the original trilogy today, not because it was it was woke, but just just not. That's just not the direction Hollywood would want to go in so every time they come out with a film idea i'd love to ask them let me guess a blonde man is going to be cruel stupid and malicious and a pox blt woman will have to correct him with passive aggressive humiliation ritual oh my gosh how did you guess that's exactly the plot well yeah yeah because i've been paying attention for the past 10 years that seems to be it seems to be a theme with Hollywood, something you, you might want to re-examine. Uh, you know, they'll burn these companies to the ground. They really, really don't care. So you got a whole th string of woke chick flicks that bombed over the past decade. So you plan to make another woke chick flick that'll probably lose $100 million. Well, it would, if they made a, a female-led pirates, it, it would cost $200 million at least, and it would it would do what her past two movies have done. It, that would be a huge bomb for Disney. Now, Disney has money to burn, but they don't want the reputational harm of being known as a company that is producing a string of bombs, which I think they've already kind of been not there. I think that attachment has already attached to them and pretty much Hollywood in general, unless you're making like a romantic comedy where you can just, you know, sidestep wokeness uh, in its entirety. At some point, you got to wonder if Hollywood is run by cocaine fueled lizard people who are trying to destroy it, which is fine because watching and talking about Hollywood is way better than anything that Hollywood could produce now. I'd rather listen to 
I don't know, the, the Ryan Canals or the Odin's movie blogs or the other, the other, whatever comes up on the Odyssey playlist. I just let that play in the background and they start talking about movies and you realize like, oh, people talking about movies are more interesting than the actual movies themselves. That's not a good spot for Hollywood to be in, but that's a spot that they voluntarily, that's a path they're going down. They're like, I, I they just they're like just controlled by parasites or something so uh pirates of the caribbean estrogen edition it absolutely could work yes you could make it in current year and it could be really funny and cute but it can't work if hollywood makes it because they're all drinking this sjw kool-aid like someone like me could make it because i'm not an sjw and i don't have to like it wouldn't be politically incorrect but it just wouldn't be politically correct enough it would be more in keeping with the theme of the earlier films or films from the 70s and 80s, which people love and people definitely still want to see today. Like you're not you can't make a movie for all all things for all people. You can't serve two masters and oh, this movie's gonna be for the young and the old. And it's like the best way to do that is look at look at the, the 2005 Pirates. That movie appealed to a huge audience. Or the original Star Wars that they managed to appeal to young and old. Oh, but that movie had like a strong male lead and he's not, he's not POC enough. Like I know he's, he's, he's got some kind of mix in him, but in Hollywood terms, it's not enough. It's not enough for them. It's like they're following this Bolshevik playbook, but the Bolshevik playbook doesn't result in profits as you've seen. I mean, there's no shortage of, if you look up like the top, top 10 or 20 bombs. I think I did a video on a couple weeks ago. The number one was the Panda movie. It bombed at $168 million. That's a pretty serious, is that Disney, the Panda movie? I think it was Disney or a Disney owned subsidiary or something like that. Um, anyway, Hollywood is not going to be able to make just about anything. And I guess they got the message with this because they looked at this and like, okay, so Birds of Prey and uh, S Squad Part 2, uh, both absolutely un unwatchable. It It's, it's, no woke uh woke doesn't sell but the thing is they knew woke wasn't selling for a long time like they've known that f this isn't this isn't recent they 2015 disney star wars they go what are you talking about that made bill uh, that made a huge profit yeah but it could have made more because if you look at the toy sales and the merchandise sales of uh, the disney star wars series uh, it was not what it should have been. And then you look at Solo, which bombed. And Solo bombing is a result of Disney underperforming. And look at Ghostbusters 2016 and the Birds of Prey and the Charlie's Angels and the whatever else has come out lately. Um, there's like, there was a whole string of chick flicks that, um, God, I don't even remember all of them. It, it, to be fair, I, like, no, I haven't. I've seen some of them. I've seen some of them or, or parts of some of them, but like they're not even worth pirating they're just like you have to pay somebody to go watch some of these movies and it's it's like even charlie's angels or um the terminator you look at them it's like they're not trying oh, you don't want the male gaze you don't want attractive attractive women prancing around half dressed okay so you're making an action adventure movie for women but there's no romance in it okay so the venn diagram it has a very slim overlap so those movies bomb yeah yeah, yeah. and we're going to keep making those bombs okay i feel like i'm i'm talking to crazy people here we just like do you have money to burn are you laundering money through to the ukraine or something through ftx what the hell's going on so um dear hollywood you don't have to make pox purse puppies and blonde man bad like every single time you just you can just move on from that i, I know you're not going to but you could if you wanted to the thing is we know who you hate and suspiciously people who look like you and me we get it we can see you they, they seem to think that they're invisible it's like no hollywood we see you because we don't just see the movies but we see you on social media as well uh, people tell you who they are believe believe them hollywood doesn't make movies they are a social engineering machine to to push you know anti-western propaganda they're the worst people on earth they've got money to burn uh, because they've got a whole series of movies that have lost money, specifically this one genre of chick-led action adventure movies. Like, there's no shortage. I think there's a half a dozen movies over the past 15 years, and they all lost money. Oh, well, number seven will make money. I don't think you're concerned about money anymore. Anyway, someone said Margot Robbie's box office poison. 
I don't see that as a case because she's not the one who's pulling the strings on this. And it's not like there's a, a non-woke movie option for her to take. What is she supposed to do? I'm sure in her own personal life, I'm sure she's crazy, crazy left winger. Because if, if you weren't a uh, if you weren't a left winger, you wouldn't be in Hollywood uh, anyway. But um, the thing is, I think Hollywood is starting to realize that they boiled the frog too quickly. Disney is, uh, I think they cut they're cutting back ahead, uh, in the parks or something. Because, you know, all the stuff is tied together. Like, they've got a, a Star Wars theme park section. But if the movies weren't a hit, well, then the, the park theme is going to be underperforming. But, I mean, Disney's such a huge name. It's like they can continue to just to just make crap for a few more years before they try to turn it around. But it's like, then they, they have to turn around all that reputational damage. But I guess they looked at Pirates Part 6 and they realized, like, yeah, we don't want to try to turn this around because it's a franchise because it looks like it looks like what what they did with term well they didn't do with Terminator whoever has the rights to Terminator it's like it's it's the movie that that just destroyed just destroyed everything associated with it. I think they did it with Scary Movie Part Five where they sold it off to a different company and it's like the equivalent of Golan Globus buying Superman Part Four which actually in, in hindsight wasn't that bad but like you know you know pirates would be like what's it going to be about it's going to be a bunch of chick led pirates but everything has to be politically correct and, and like 2022 woke which isn't even 2020 woke which is how fast the window has shifted i can't even imagine what the plot of it would be but it would it would be something with european people would, would be evil like they would just be doing oh they so these europeans are coming to some small island and, and immediately they're trying to genocide everybody oh okay well that's that's the pirate. Yeah, they're all blonde hair, blue eyes. They're out of like Aryan World War II central casting. Oh, it's kind of weird. I mean, maybe like the Portuguese or the Spanish might have been more. Oh, these are all blonde hair, blue eyed Spanish and Portuguese. Okay, that doesn't, uh, you know, willing to suspension of disbelief. I mean, Woman King, we're fighting to end slavery. Opens up a history book. You were fighting to maintain slavery. It's Hollywood. It's fiction. Yeah. I don't think we're even on the same page anymore where you guys have a script to follow and it's really cringy like i never imagined the future would be this this lame and unwatchable anyway like comment subscribe we'll see you guys on the next episode